What's up guys, I care, so welcome back to your room. Today we're going to react to Bailey Sarah, the Ken and Bar couple, a deal with the devil, uh, mystery and makeup. Like, uh, now, I, <laughs> the reason why I watched it because I love murder, I love murder mysteries and stuff like that. I always love learning about different cases and stuff, and it just really interested me, not so much the makeup part, but I really wanted to see, like, what she was going to talk about. So, yeah, it's going to react to, <laughs> no, I don't react to things like this, but like I said, I love I love my mystery, so we're gonna jump right into this guy because it's a pretty lengthy verse. So we're gonna jump right into it. Uh, yeah. God, that was not the best intro, wasn't it? Hi, friends. How are you today? I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. I'm doing. All my right. name is Bailey Sarian, and today is Monday, which means it's murder, mystery, and makeup Monday. Shana 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 shana. If you are new here, oh God. hi, my name is Bailey Sarian and on Mondays I sit down and I talk about a true crime story that's been heavy on my noggin and I do my makeup at the same time. If you're interested in See true crime and you like makeup, I would highly suggest you hit that subscribe button because I'm here for you on Mondays. Last week we talked about the Mollus farm. Do you remember? Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't the only one who, who was thinking what I was thinking, you know? Like, it was just kind of, it wasn't adding up. It wasn't making sense. But so many of you guys had some really good theories in the comment section. And then I was like, oh, dear. So now what? I don't know. I will keep you updated if there's any um, updates on that one. Yeah. Shit, man. I don't know. Before we jump into today's story, we do have a... If you guys like that reaction, you want to do reaction to that one, comment down below. Sponsor. So let's skadoodle right into that. Today's... Yeah, we're gonna skip right past that because um not my spot. <laughs> I like that. I like that last day. That's that's pretty nice. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Back. Wow. Okay, so today I do have to add a disclaimer. I would do my normal like warning, blah blah blah, but like today's story is pretty intense. It's pretty brutal. There's just it involves like everything. I don't really like to go into graphic detail in my stories, if you haven't noticed. Aww. I just kind of like vaguely mention things. It's just heavy. It's very, very heavy. I think a lot of times we just want to hear the story and not necessarily hear all the gruesome That's details. True. But with this story, it's almost like you can't avoid some of the details. So I apologize in advance for how in Tense it is, but it just kind of involves everything. This story has been highly recommended since day one, and I've been avoiding it just because I felt like, eh, it's been talked about a million trillion times, like what else can I add to it? But, you know, I'm doing it for you guys because you've been asking. And honestly, I had the story so wrong. I thought I knew this story. Turns out I did not. Nay, nay. I don't know I the story. I think I've been rambling enough. If you're ever curious to know what I'm using, I do list it down in the description box. Other than that, I will shush my little mouth and let's get into today's story. Today we're talking about Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka. Carla was 17 years old and a high school student. She looked crazy. She had a part-time <laughs> job working at a local pet shop when she first met Paul Bernardo. At this time, Paul Bernardo was 23 years old and so attending really the University of Toronto and he was All studying right. to become an accountant. Now, it was said that he was doing well in school and he was on his way to graduate. October 17th, 1987, Carla was attending a pet food convention in Scarborough, 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 pet Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So, mm -hmm. so Carla is working at this convention. They're doing like pet food stuff. Ooh. And as the <laughs> night ended, she and a coworker pet went down stuff. to the hotel restaurant to grab some food. So the two of them, they're eating, they're sitting, you know, and then that's when Paul Bernardo walks into the restaurant. Now, Carla and Paul, they made eye contact, like when he walked in and they, they say, or it was said that it was just an instant connection. You lust at sight. first sight. Paul was over six sight. feet tall. He was said to be an extremely good looking guy. He was right. quite charming. He approached Carla and the two started chatting it up. Now the two of them, they just clicked. And the coworker that was with Carla was like, okay, well, I guess I'll be going now. You know, because she saw that they were just hitting it off and she didn't want to get in the way of that. So she takes off. Now Carla and Paul, they end up sitting there at the restaurant just talking about anything and everything for hours. And when the restaurant closed, that's when the two of them headed up to Carla's hotel room where they involved in some sexual relations. Right. From my understanding, quick, the age fast. of consent in Canada is 16 years old. So not illegal, but she's still, you know, there's, there's a big age difference and she's still fairly young, but okay. 
So Carla, you know, she was just believing that Paul was the the man of her dreams. (laughs) And the two made a very good looking couple. Paul also told many of his friends that, you know, it was just a match made in heaven. That he had found his soulmate. And how he would do anything for Carla. And Carla would do anything for him. Now Carla, she was the oldest of three daughters. And she was well liked in school she was pretty she was somewhat popular and growing up she lived in saint Catharines in the province of ontario with her family in school it was said that carla had many boyfriends and many boys interested in her but when she met that's a red flag she had many boyfriends like and many guys so i mean i don't wanna i'm not i'm not i'm not, I'm not gonna say it but you you, you, you know what I'm, you know what I'm getting Paul, at. it was all she could talk about with her friends. You know, he was a much older man. He was yep. in college. And like, she would just brag often to her friends about Paul. And they all just thought it was so He would cool. teach her how now, to do Now, Paul, stocks. he was the youngest of three children. It was said that he was a sweet kid and had a charming smile, but that he had a very difficult upbringing they always or do a have difficult a childhood. Um, His mother was verbally abusive towards him and his siblings. Then when Paul was 16, he found out that the man he called dad was not his biological father. Now, this was upsetting and it broke all trust he had with his parents. I don't know because I read different things. Some people say like it was an accident how he found out. And then some people say like his mom just randomly like said it when she was being verbally abusive towards him. Well, if his mom was like that, I would believe that she would. So again, around. Around the age of 16, that's when Paul began peeping through the windows of his female neighbors. He would watch them as they undressed. And he would do this like at any chance he could get. He would watch women through their open windows. Um, So AKA a peeping Tom. But as he got older, peeping through- Ah, so ladies, please make sure to close your windows. (laughs) Windows just wasn't cutting it for him anymore. Paul said that his fantasies just started to become darker and darker, and he would dream about taking advantage or just taking control over women. But at that age, he wasn't acting on it just yet, but it was like starting to happen. Yeah, they said they said that they said that in right there. So in September of 1983, that's when Paul started studying at the University of Toronto in Scarborough, Scarborough, Come on, Bailey. Scarborough. <laughs> He's studying there. His friends and the people who knew him, they they the really time. liked him. He had, again, this charm about him. He can make friends with anyone. And overall, everyone just thought Paul's a great guy. You know, yep. he, just people wanted to be around him. Often, Demon, Paul was him. seen as the life of the party. And if Paul was at the party, then you knew it was like, it was going to be a good time. Paul did have a few girlfriends throughout college. Things would always start really well. It would be like this picture perfect relationship. But then as time went on, um, the relationship, or at least their sexual relationship, would turn more abusive, violent, and sometimes controlling. And then at that point is when the women would break it off. In the spring of 1988, a sexual predator was roaming the streets in Scarborough. By May, there had been seven different reports made by women to the local police sharing their their attacks. The local police, they got on TV and they were just warning women who are watching, look, there's this predator, he's still out on the streets. They were telling women to not walk Mm, around at night alone, to not stay out late unless someone was with them, and just trying their best to warn everybody. Whoever this attacker was would grab women when they were leaving the bus stop at night and were walking alone. Some women were attacked when they were on their evening run in the park. They'd be approached from behind. The person would get them behind some bushes or kind of like in a little secluded area. And that's where they would be assaulted. His victims were forced to perform oral intercourse sodomy and were sometimes beaten afterwards oh my god it was pretty intense and pretty freaking scary the first reports that i've always thought that like you know just rape is true i've always thought just the pussy that because it's bad because like you're so desperate for sense of control that you have to force yourself on somebody like that's just how de- like it's it just it always just seemed like a bitch ass move to me when it comes to just like raping women, raping anybody, man. It's like it's it's just something that's disgusting. And then it's like then it's like you're gonna beat him. It's like come on, dude. It's just, it's just too much to me. It's too much. That were made about this predator were just 
not that it, this is like not as bad, it's still bad, but it was just about a man groping the victims. But then That's after so about a year went by with still no suspect in custody, the attacks turned more violent. Um, the media gave this person the name, the Scarborough Rapist. Everybody in the city was just on high alert. Many statements were made from witnesses and the victims, but the police could not seem to get an accurate description of who this person was they because the women had been attacked from behind. They really didn't get a clear shot of the, their attacker's face. All that they could tell was that whoever this guy was, well, it was a guy for starters. Yeah. He was young, he was good looking, and he had light colored hair. So that Probably didn't really narrow too. it down too much, but that's what they had to work with. Now, as time went on, police were able to collect about a hundred different DNA samples from potential suspects, but so far, like nothing was a match. That's when the Toronto police had called in an FBI profiler to help create a profile of who this guy was. So the profiler analyzed the police reports and was able to link four more attacks to the Scarborough, Scarborough rapist. I'm so sorry I keep butchering this name. I'm <laughs> trying my best. But they linked four I more attacks to this person, which brought the total to 11 victims. So the FBI analysts determined that the attacks were anger-based and sadistic in nature, which was like a rare combination. But whoever this person was, was very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Now the profiler, they felt that this was a high-functioning, intelligent, psychopathic, sexually sadistic offender and they believe that whoever it was lived in the area most likely in a family household had to be in their early 20s and because when you uh what was i say sorry uh, i was i was just thinking because you know like i said you can tell a different type of killer right because somebody looking for sexual, who's just looking for a sexual release, is just gonna do it and go right. They're not gonna beat them afterwards. They're not gonna torture them. They're just gonna do it and go right. That's because that's what they want. But for somebody who wants, who wants control, who wants power over the woman that they rape, they're going to make it last. They're going to make them feel that they're going to do everything their power to make that woman feel absolutely helpless. And knowing people like that, those people normally are people who have had, you know, like some weird upbringing or just like some others have just have this, always this dark desire in them to just always be in control. Whether that means they grew up with a bad, you know, par parental figure, whether it be a bad mother or just bad woman in general, they want that control. Ooh. And had to have violent relationships with women. So again, when Paul and Carla first met in the fall of 1987, there had already been three attacks linked to the Scarborough rapist. Now, Carla, she never suspected Paul could be the one linked to these crimes because their relationship seemed He was the sweet girl. He was the popular Paul guy. would show Why? up with flowers, and he would do this pretty often. He would give her gifts at every chance he could, and he just treated her really well. Sure, like Always thinking of Carla and just expressing how he wanted to... To just be that's with her how they forever get you. and take care that's of her. That's how they get you. Their like, relationship with them. seemed to move quickly, but they were infatuated with because one another. She thinks they're the and perfect they guy. Keep their hands do anything she can to So they had you. been dating for over 18 months, and Paul would drive over 80 miles to St. Catharines to visit Carla several times a week. Damn, now, 80 Carla's miles. Now, Carla's family, they, they loved Paul. It was said that they loved Paul. They thought he was a great catch. He was well-educated. Um, he was handsome. His life was on the right track. They didn't mind the age difference between the two. Really? Because I would have. He was great. That sucks. I don't care how This is a side is. note. I think a lot of us have this image of what we think these awful people look like, right? We yes. just think of these monsters, these atrocious beings, right? Like, ugh. But we need to get out of our heads that these sickos look like monsters. They don't look like monsters. They're attractive, normal, you would never guess yep. type of people. Yep. So, yeah, yep. I don't know what to do with that information, though, because yep. it sounded like there was no red flags with this guy. Well, yes, there was. I think they were being, okay, we continue. Yeah, she's right. There are there are many red flags, you know, with this, with this dude. But like I said, when you're so infatuated with this person... 
when you're so like, oh, this is the right guy. This is the <coughs> like, this is the person I'm meant to be with. You're not going to care. But that's what he was doing. He was buying all these gifts. He was showering with her. He was making her. Making her, he was making him her, he was making him her everything. Because when you're her everything, it's the same with beach relationship. When one of the things about a beach relationship, why the woman never leaves, is because she feels that that person she was her everything, and that if she leaves him, she'll have nothing. She'll have nothing. And that's how, and that's how they make you feel. That's how he made her feel. Getting all these drivers' gifts, treating her like a queen, just waiting on her hand and foot, being that perfect guy for her. So that she could never leave him. And she's right, you know, uh, despite what the movies may see, despite the movies may uh, show us, you know, not all monsters are ugly. Let's take, uh, I mean, this is kind of like a, a left turn, but let's take, we'll, we'll go like, we'll do this real quick. Like, uh, let's take Lucifer right from the Bible. You know, he's supposed to be this big, ugly, evil, nasty monster. But Lucifer is actually the most beautiful angel in all of heaven. Despite the fact he has such darkness in and even him, he was absolutely gorgeous. And that's the same thing. Like some of these some of these monsters are really handsome people. They're really smart people. They're really well off people. They're people who you would not suspect to be a monster. Because it's real easy to look at somebody and he looks a little worse. Like, oh, that guy. That guy, that guy, that guy's probably a murderer or a rape or something. And people do it all the time. That's just how people are. You know, when you look, you judge people by your looks. Where the other guy over here who's clean kept, nice haircut, got a good job. Uh, a great family goes to work every day. Like you, oh, oh he's perfect. He, he he probably never heard a fly. Not knowing, he just killed six women last week. You just you just never know. You can't judge a book by its cover. In the spring of 1989, Carla graduated from high school and was really now trying to plan what the next chapter in her life was. You know, but when it came to Carla and Paul, like their relationship, it went from Carla telling her friends that, you know, everything was great and perfect to now Carla telling her friends that Paul was becoming verbally abusive towards her. Yep. But soon after they would have an argument, Carla would forgive Paul yep, and apologize for his wrongdoings. He would that's maybe show goes. up with a gift to show he was sorry. And then that's they would just goes. They drag on. you back in. Yeah, so things just kind of... We're changing. Oh my God. In December of... Uh, sorry about it, guys. Freaking out. 1989, Paul and Carla, they went on a romantic getaway to Aww. the Niagara Falls. And that is where um, Paul got on one knee and proposed to Carla. And she said, yes. No. So Carla went back home, like, all excited, you know, and told her parents, like, that they're engaged and the parents were thrilled because now they're going to have Paul, like their son-in-law. And he was Paul such a was treat amazing. to them at that time. So Paul and Carla decided to set their wedding date for the spring of 1991. On May 29th, 1990, police released a sketch of what they believe the Scarborough rapist looked like oh to the public. Now, when the sketch was released, it was on the front pages of the papers, and so everybody was seeing it, right? So friends of Paul Pernardo were like, hey. That looked like Paul. Have you seen this? <laughs> like, it kind of looks like Paul a little bit, if you squint. Like, I know, right? Like, with this information, with glass. one of Paul's best friends actually contacted Toronto police and said that the drawing looked just like his friend Paul Bernardo. So they make a note of this. And then by November of 1990, so a couple months go by, there were several people who had contacted police saying that the sketch looked just like, like Paul. Paul Bernardo. Mm -hmm. So with this information, the police find Paul, they bring him in for questioning, and then they ask if they can get a DNA sample from him, which Paul willingly gave them the dna was sent over to be tested but at this time they had hundreds upon hundreds of dna samples waiting to be tested so it sat on a shelf with all the other ones just waiting for its that turn. was a mistake a very very mm, unfortunate move 
Now, it was said that at this time, DNA testing was still somewhat Yeah, it wasn't as advanced as technology now. was just a lot slower than it is today. So going through all of the DNA was going to take some time. And it did take some goddamn time. Unfortunately. Way too much time. Really? So after Paul was Her questioned, I don't know if he got freaked out or he just didn't, he didn't care, but he decided to move from Scarborough to St. Catharines to live with Carla and her family. Now he was probably freaked now, out. Now they thought, Carla and Paul thought it would be best to move in with Carla's family because then they could save money. And then um, once they had enough money, they could get a place of their own. But it was kind of funny because after Paul moved, all of a sudden, all the crimes stopped happening in Scarborough and yeah. seemed to pick up around St. Catharines. Hmm. They, the family really did not think Paul could be related to these crimes in any way. They just really adored Did they not see the skits? Like, did they not see the skits? Like, did they not at least hear about, like, like, come on, man. Like, the crimes just suddenly stopped. The dude looks like Paul. Like... Sorry, guys. Uh, uh, I'm down. But I'm saying the dude looks like Paul. You're, you're, you're telling me, like, just nothing happened? Like, there was no red flags at all. Come on, man. Adored him, especially Carla's younger sister, 15 year old Tammy. She looked up to Paul as like the older brother she never had. Paul was developing very dark urges towards Carla's younger sister, Tammy. It was oh said God. that, you know, he would watch her undress from time to time, all creepily when she was unaware. So Paul gave in to his urges and he oh told no. Carla that he really wanted something that Carla couldn't give him. And that thing was a virgin. He made Carla feel bad because, you know, she wasn't a virgin, but the closest thing to Carla's virginity would be her younger sister, Tammy's virginity. So Paul oh pressured God, Carla man, to up. let him have her virginity. And Carla said that she wanted to please Paul how do you just let him have somebody else's virginity? Like, that's your younger sister virginity. You don't just let him have. You're her older sister, not her mother. You didn't make her. You don't own her. You let somebody have. I'd be oh Lord mercy. Or he would he would leave her. So no. she and Paul came up with a plan to drug her younger sister so Paul could have sex with her. Yeah. God yep. damn. Yeah. I told you, the story is disturbing, okay? Uh, now, this would be Carla's Christmas present to Paul. That poor child. Okay. Man, that's so, right. December 23rd, 1990. A virginity is so sacred. Probably even more for a woman than it is for a man. And to forcibly have it taken from you, not me, like, it, it gets me, it gets me upset a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Cause that's not that's not right. It's things like this that like say gets me because it's not right. It's right. It's wrong. How dare you take something so precious from her? She was only fifteen. She looked up to these two people. Like I don't I don't even know. Indeed. Carla's family went to bed, uh, but Carla and Paul they asked Tammy to stay up and they could sneak some alcoholic beverages together while everyone was asleep. Mm. So Carla made the the drinks for everybody she would end up crushing up pills to put in Tammy's drink. Now at this time, um, Carla was working at a veterinarian clinic and she stole animal tranquilizers from there to use on Tammy. Animal now these pills would knock anyone out and Carla thought like it would be best to use these to keep her sister asleep while Paul raped her. Carla also soaked a rag in hal halothane which is a general anesthetic. She held it over her sister's face while Paul raped her. They also busted out a video camera and recorded the entire thing, you know, for Christmas memories. Sick. Wow. 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 No, I have, uh, I have three younger sisters myself, but I can't, I can't imagine that happening. Like, it just... It hurts my soul now just, just even thinking about something that happened to them. Something that happened like to anybody. It happened to a young girl and that happened by somebody. Like, it it always hurts more when it comes from somebody closer to you from your own big sister. You believe you believe this person all your life. You thought they're supposed to love you, protect you, and they're, 
and they use you as some plaything. Like it's it, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Like it, it, it's filthy. Now, when Paul was done, he told Carla, "It's your turn. Your turn to assault your sister," oh which my God. she did, and she, they also recorded on tape. Now, soon after. Tammy began to vomit and she started to choke. So Paul and Carla, they're kind of freaking out. They quickly dress her, they hide the camera, and then they call an ambulance. So when the paramedics arrive, Paul and Carla told them that they tried to revive Tammy after she passed out from drinking, but like, they don't know. Tammy ended up being taken to the hospital where she was later pronounced dead. Oh so God. one of the doctors that was examining Tammy noticed a burn around her mouth um, where Carla was holding the halothane. Uh, how? Like, how? As an older sibling, how could you do that? How could you do that? It's, it's unfathomable for me to think of something like that. It's an, uh, sorry guys, um, uh, being a little bit upset over here. This was just this is art. I can't imagine and then the fact that she lost her life. She lost her virginity and her life in the same day. Like look, look she it, ugh. Ugh. soaked rag. She had like a burn around her mouth. Carla and Paul said that it was rug burn on her face when they pulled her. They pulled her off the, the bed onto the floor. They're trying to revive her. She, she got rug burn on her face. And like that was a good enough answer for them. It was concluded that Tammy died of natural causes. At 15, she died of natural causes. I mean, so that makes ass sense. Ugh. Carla's parents were devastated, but they honestly thought that her death was just a tragic accident. Teenagers, you know, they just experiment with drugs and alcohol. So like Tammy must have just been experimenting and she just took it too far. And it was like nothing more than that, which is just awful. It's so sad. So a month goes by, Carla and Paul have saved enough money to get their own place. It's a two-story home in Port Dalhousie. I hope he's right. It's a small hell. town near St. Catharines. I don't even believe um, it's in a hell. cute little house too. Well, oh, since God. been knocked. Sorry guys about the cuss. There might be uh some more depending on how many ads are in this. But like I understand what's back then and Tuck now he was his van, you know, and all that stuff, but like somebody had to have a dispatch. Somebody like like was Tammy known to be a drinker? Was she known to do drugs? Like, like, come on, man! Like, ah, I have for Carla to feel nothing. Down, but it was a cute house that they just ruined. So when the two moved into their own place, it said that's when Paul's abuse really went up a notch. I hope he, he beat would the hell jokingly over. tell Carla that he was a Scarborough rapist and went from just being verbally abusive, which is still awful, to now physically abusive. I hope he beat the hell out of her. I'm gonna be real with you. I know it's wrong, and somebody say this, and she would trick, no, no, fuck that, fuck, fuck his shit. She hope kill a little sister. I hope he beat the hell out of her every night. Abusive towards Carla. Now, when Carla would tell Paul that she was she was leaving him, or she wanted to leave, she won't go he nowhere. would threaten her, saying that he was gonna go to police and tell them about her involvements in Tammy's death. You know, and he had the videotapes to, to prove, prove it. it. So if he was going to go down, she was going to go down too. Carla said that she felt like she really couldn't leave. Bullshit. June 15th, 1991, two weeks before Carla and Paul's wedding, Paul came home with a surprise for Carla. Now you would think like flowers or something, but no, of course not. Paul came home with a 14 year old girl oh. named Leslie Mahaffey. Paul said that Leslie was in her own backyard and he pulled up in his car. He offered the girl a cigarette, which was back in his car. And when she approached the car, she got in and then he kidnapped her. Carla oh. and Paul ended up holding her captive in their home, assaulting her repeatedly, all while recording the attacks on videotape. So after holding her captive for about 24 hours, the couple ended up strangling her, then dismembering her body. They oh took different God. parts of her body and they like mix it in with concrete blocks. Then they dumped it into the local lake, um, Lake Gibson. 
They dumped it in there. On July 29th, 1991, Carla and Paul, that's when they got married in a ceremony with over a hundred friends and family around to celebrate their special day. But on that very same day, a fisherman came across some of the body parts of the 14 year old victim, Leslie Mahaffey in the lake. It was all over the news. People were just like in the community were just horrified. Like it was, it's, I mean, it is like such a brutal, what the heck? I'd have got a crew together and every night, every day, we'd have been marching, we'd have been watching. I'd be like, we're going to find this bastard, we're going to get him, and we're going to put his body parts in the lake. It's just, it's just wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Heck. So it was just everywhere. So over the next year, police looked for any clues into the, who the teenager's killer could be. And that's when they brought in the same FBI profiler from Scarborough rapist case. Now at the time, the FBI profiler, he said he had no, he had no reason to connect the two cases, which sounds absolutely ridiculous. I know, right? I know, right? But he didn't. So there was no connection being made between the two. And they didn't really have any leads either. So time- It's all fucking incompetence. I don't care about, come on, man. Come on. God, where's that intuition? Time went on and you know, Paul and Carla's life continued as newlyweds. But of course, like Paul was just probably, I don't really know, cause you know, I don't know, but I'm Fucking assuming insane. he was probably getting cocky because he's like getting away with this. And he's just wanting more. He's wanting more. Cause he feels like he can get away with it because he is getting away with it. So Paul asked Carla to get in touch with some of her sister's Tammy's best friends. Oh, come on. He was like, hey, get them on the phone, invite them over, have them come over to the house where then we can drug them the same way that we did to Tammy. So over the next year, Carla actually was able to get several young women to go over to, not even young women, young girls, to come over to the home and hang out where they would then drug and sexually assault them. Now these victims would survive their attacks. Um, they would wake up the next day having no memory of the night before or of the assaults. Some of these attacks were also caught on videotape where they videotaped it and it was kept in Paul's growing collection. April 16th, 1992, Paul and Carla went on a drive on an afternoon cruise, but only with the intention of bringing home a new sex slave to keep. That's when they spotted 15-year-old um, Kristen French. She was walking home from school. They drive past her and they pull into a church parking lot. Um, like it was a little ways ahead of her. And then they were just waiting for her to walk by. Carla was sitting in the passenger seat and she called out to Kristen asking like, hey, can you help us with directions? Because like we're lost. And Carla was holding a map. So it just, it seemed legit. She walks up to the car and then that's when Kristen was shoved into the car and then the couple drove off heading back to their house. Now it wasn't long until Kristen was reported missing. And then many witnesses came forward saying that they saw Kristen in the church parking lot and she was talking to a car that had two people inside of it. The witnesses also reported seeing them drive away in a beige Camaro. So now that they had a description of the car, police started searching heavily for a beige Camaro. Now there were tons of billboards. For some reason, I'm also like, as interested as I am in this story, I'm also interested in her, in her makeup. She's like, she's doing a very good job. I don't, I don't know why I just want to say that. put up or posted around saying, have you seen this car? Have you seen this car? And then on the billboard was it? a picture of the beige Camaro. But what they didn't know was that the eyewitness reports were actually incorrect. Paul actually drove a gold colored Nissan, not a Camaro. I could see the confusion, how that could happen, but it still wasted a lot of time because they were looking for a beige Camaro and you know, it wasn't a Camaro, it was a Nissan. So the media started linking the disappearance of Kristen French to the murder of Leslie Mahaffey. They were just like, hey, these things gotta be linked, right? Now the FBI profiler, I'm laughing because like, <laughs> you just stupid. think he would have made this connection. I know, right? I know. Didn't. The FBI profiler described the suspect. Like, this is the FBI. They're supposed to be one of the top people in the world going on trekking all the big criminals 
And you tell me you couldn't have the, you couldn't like you couldn't like at least thought like somehow that could have been a connection. Like even just the tiniest thought that somehow that could have, that that those two cases could have been linked. You were just like, nah, bro, like it. Bro, there's no way, bro. No, stop. I'm stupid, bro. I'm stupid. You're stupid. I've been saying I'm too late. This case getting to me. Like, come on, you like really? Back just being a white male in their late twenties, probably had a history of sexually violent crimes, a history of domestic violence, someone who was most likely violent in their personal relationships. Kind of like the Scarborough rapist, but still no connection was being made. Paul and Carla ended up keeping Kristen French for several, several days. They videotaped her assaults just to add to their growing collection. And then when Paul was satisfied, that's when they strangled and they- God, man, the, I feel bad, man. The poor cops are detectives. You have to, you have to sit through and watch them tapes, man. Just, I don't know if I could have did it. They killed her. On April 30th, 1992, Kristen's body was found more than 30 miles away in Burlington, and it was left in a ditch not far from the local cemetery, just all around awful. And then in January of 1993, Paul ended up beating Carla up like so bad to the yes. point that she went to the local emergency room to receive get. treatment. Paul had attacked her. And no guys, I don't condone violence against women or harm against anyone. But they, ah, what she was doing, man, like there had to be some retribution. I'm, I'm not mad that he put his hands on her. I wish he had killed her. With a torch, and he ended up giving her two really bad, like black eyes, a broken rib, and severe bruising. After two years of marriage, it was at this point that Carla decided to leave Paul. Oh, now, really? around this same time, finally, Paul's DNA was being submitted and tested for the Scarborough now, uh, rapist leaving. case. His DNA was positively identified as the man responsible for these attacks. So police finally are connecting the two, the murders in St. Catharines, they finally had their person. So before going straight to Paul, police actually, they reach out to Carla and they wanted to like create a wedge in the relationship, knowing that, that, the, that they could probably get more information from Carla. Now, Carla thought that she was being called into question, um, to be questioned about the domestic assault. But after the interview with police, Carla went back to her family home and she ended up breaking down. She confessed to everything. Carla was afraid that the police, they already knew what she what she was involved with, or at least the police were close to uncovering the truth. And she wanted to tell her parents before, you know, shit hit the fan. Hit the I'm fan. sure her parents were like devastated. I mean, I don't even know. I don't even know. But her parents suggest like see he helped murder her little sister and all these other young girls. It's like as a as a parent, as a father, I don't even I don't even know how I would feel. Like I don't know what, what what would you do in that situation? Like if there's anybody's a parent watch this, like like I doubt that you know, but tell me like I don't know what the, I don't know what I would do in that situation. Like you wanna help your child, but it's like how can you just I don't know that she hired a lawyer, which Carla ended up doing. So she told her lawyer that Paul was indeed the Scarborough rapist and also admitted to being involved in the two local murders and the death of her own sister. Carla would end up agreeing to testify against Paul in court um, in exchange for a reduced sentence for herself. So police end up agreeing to this and then Carla sits down they with got the police them and gives them a full confession. The great debate around this story, well, there's a lot of great debates around this story, but one of them is like Carla's involvement, okay? She told police, you know, that she's a, she was a victim and stuff and Paul, like forced her to do this and whatnot. I saw clips of her being questioned by police. And let me just say, Bullshit. I think she's like new. She's a little smarter than she let on because when she goes to like be questioned by police, first of all, she's dressed like a very innocent little schoolgirl, okay, which is fine. Like that's that's fine, but that's not normally how she would dress, okay. So she was trying to play up this like I'm so innocent thing, and then she would answer all of her questions just very like very innocent. She'd be like, then he chopped her up 
and I just was so scared. Yeah, so I was just there. Like, that's how she talks the whole time. Okay. <laughs> this must be frustrating because police could have got both of them. She apparently used, like, the Mickey Mouse with JC. They, they could have got both of them. Ah, that's bullshit. That is bullshit, man. That's bullshit. Bullshit and truth where it's like, there's no way. Okay, so after Paul gets arrested, which I'm kind of jumping here, but Paul gets arrested. And then they ask Carla to go around their house and show like where Paul did things at. Like describe in detail where things took place. I'm not kidding. She takes them into the bathroom, the police and all them. And she's like, this is where we put her. And then we, we bathed her in the bathtub. And then we dismembered her. And then she turns around to like where the kitchen, not the kitchen, the bathroom sink that and all that stuff. That is such a creepy voice like, Can I ask you guys something? Where did all of my perfumes go? I had a bunch of perfume samples in here and I'm just wondering where they all went. Because the detectives took everything and I don't know where my... my... I could have broken in because I... There's no way in hell I could have been I could have been a ticket back there because I have, it took all my willpower within me not to strangle her right then and there not to try to get not 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 to do anything to her like it it took all my willpower and I don't believe I have enough of it so it's, it's a good thing I want to take back then stuff went and you're just like girl read the room you just talked about dismembering a girl and you're wondering where your perfumes at like it was just like okay. And then she doesn't really show a lot of emotion, but then the moment she talks about one of the victims came over, Paul like took out really expensive um, champagne flutes. Is that what they're called? Like the glasses that you put in champagne. champagne and flutes. you could just see okay. all of a sudden she just, her emotion comes out over these, these glasses that Paul decided to use to drug the girls with. So she was like, those glasses, they were from France and they were very expensive and we never used them. They were only for a special occasion and I was so mad. And like, she's getting all worked up over Paul's choice of glasses that he used. And like, that's one of the only times you see her like getting worked up over something and you're like, okay, girl. She didn't care. She did not care about what she did to them girls. I don't believe she feels sorry about anything. I really don't. I believe the stress of and the guilt and the fear of this of the cops getting to that's what I'm gonna break down. But I don't believe she cared. I don't believe she cared this to her sister or any of them other girls. I don't believe it. I, I don't believe it. this. This C is just as cold as as Paul. There's a reason why they were so in love, right? This isn't a case of opposites attract. It's it's just not. Mm. This isn't my, okay, okay. And then like, it, it just keeps happening. Cause then she's like describing again, like what's what happened? And then she's like, can I ask you something? Do you know where all of my furniture went? Because they just came and they took all of the furniture and I'm just wondering where they went with my furniture. Can I get it back? Bro, I'd have Do you not understand like what's happening right now? Like you, hello? And then another one, they were in like the basement. She sees a book on the ground She's, and she goes, excuse me, can I have this book? Because my sister really wants it. She's been asking about this my book. My sister and I'm really- to Take this book. And that's like the only time oh that you get God. these little snippets of like, mm, mm. Her parents still let her near her sister. After finding out she helped kill her other sister. So soon, like. Ah, I, I don't understand. I'm trying to process this and I can't. Mm hmm. 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 So Carla kept telling police that Paul forced her to participate in all of the attacks against her will. Carla also told police that there were videotapes in the house that would have everything they needed because everything was recorded. So she's like, you have to get those tapes, they're in the house. On February 17th, 1993, that's when Paul Bernardo was arrested. They began searching the home, their goal being to find those tapes because that was gonna be their smoking gun. They would end up spending 71 days searching the home, but the police could not locate these videotapes, which Damn. Carla claimed showed the attacks. Now, without these tapes, they had no direct evidence that linked Paul to the crimes. So they arranged the plea agreement with Carla because they're heavily relying on her to give her testimony 
testimony, that's what's going to put Paul behind bars. And in exchange, Carla would receive a reduced sentence for her involvement, which this deal was kept secret from the public and that caused a whole upset. On June 28th- Because it would have been outraged. People would have been calling for her death. I cannot say I would not blame them. Like people would have been outraged, and I'd have been one of them. I'd be like, "What? What? What? Plea." Eighth, nineteen ninety three. Carla appeared in court for her involvement with the crimes, and the court put a publication ban on her trial, which was very unlikely of the courts to do. This caused a huge upset with the media, and the public was angered kid. because their right to know was being denied. And like, this was a really, really big case. So people are just trying to figure out what happened. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, like, Correct me if I'm wrong here, but from my understanding, it was the U.S. who gave them the title of the Ken and Barbie killers, like they would, you know, <laughs> um, because of their good looks. I know, right? Like, good oh looks. my God, they're so good looking. How could they be killers? <sighs> so Carla was convicted on manslaughter. Man, she is pretty funny. Like, I, I can see why she's popular. I can see why she, people like her. She's doing a good job of telling the story. I actually really like her makeup, but she's also funny and stuff like that. I, I, I like her. But it's just it's just crazy, man. That they that they that they would give this 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 horrible horrible human being a plea deal. I, it it blows my mind. There have been people that have done not even close to what she helped do and got no plea deal. Her charges, and she ended up receiving a twelve year sentence, which again caused a lot of upset. The plea agreement was said to be kept a secret in order to make sure that Paul had a fair trial. So Carla was sent to prison, and then on August second, nineteen ninety three, she ended up filing for divorce from Paul. I'm surprised on nobody May took 18th, her out in prison. Nineteen ninety five, Paul's tried to trial get her. began. Paul pleaded not guilty on nine charges and connections with the deaths of Leslie and Kristen, including kidnapping, unlawful confinement, aggravated sexual assault, and murder. The prosecutors had presented new evidence during trial that was not known about. They ended up finding the videotapes in the couple's home. I know, it was kind of like a surprise. I don't know where they found it or like I know, where, right? I don't know. I didn't, what, they, they found it They couldn't find it for 71 days. Great. Now this was the first time that they had direct evidence against Paul, but also Carla as well. Now these tapes revealed a completely different version of events and they felt that Carla had completely misled authorities. Because on the tapes, Carla was seen fully participating in the attacks. Had the tapes surfaced sooner so, or earlier, it most likely would have affected her plea deal. So Paul's team was like, oh shit, like they got the tapes, you know? But they're like, yeah, Paul's on the tapes, but they never show him murdering anyone, you know? <laughs> Paul instead was like, it wasn't me who murdered them. I was not the killer. It was actually Carla who murdered the victims. On June so 19th, it's a blame game. Who cares? Get them Carla both. testified against Paul, and that's where she stated- I'll be like, I don't give a fuck who killed them. I want you both. You're both going down. I don't care if you killed them, she killed them, if, if Satan killed them, I don't care. You're both going down. That she was also a victim to Paul, and he was the mastermind behind it all. When Carla was asked about the videotapes, she said that she suffered from battered spouse syndrome, and that was her reasoning. Many believe that, like, yes, she was indeed abused by Paul, but she could not be classified as a person suffering from battered spouse syndrome. No. When talking about battered spouse syndrome, they were mainly talking about people who were like suffering from tremendous psychological abuse. But these tapes showed that Carla was more of an accomplice in the horrible crimes versus a victim. She knew what the she was doing. The judge allowed the jurors to watch the videotapes and only allowed the public to listen to them but not view it. They didn't want to put the family through more grief by viewing these tapes because of just how awful they were. Paul's trial lasted months. At the end of it, the jury deliberated for five hours. Then on September 1st, 1995, 31-year-old old Paul Bernardo was found guilty of all He's nine not even that good looking. against him, including Whatever. the two murders. Ken and Paul was sentenced to life in prison. While Paul is sitting in prison, he also confessed oh to 14
Sorry about that, guys. I had to go put my cat up. She was messing with this. But anyway, I say like, I'm gonna make you look better younger right now. Is like, he, 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 uh, like, come on. Ken and Barbie. Yeah. More sexual assaults of women in the Scarborough area. And the judge declared him just a dangerous offender, which will most likely keep him in prison without the chance of parole for the rest of his life. Because he does have a possibility of parole after like 25 years, I believe. But let's hope that he does not get out because it sounds like he's he would do it again. Like, come on. So the great debate around this case was if Carla got off way too easily. I believe so. Many believe that Carla was just as sick, if not more sick, than Paul was. Now, whatever was on these tapes showed a completely different side of Carla, but also just a different story. I didn't see them. I don't want to see them, so I didn't not look really, it up. Myself. But just based off of what I was hearing um, from interviews with the police department and stuff and the jurors. It was really bad. Carla seemed thrilled to be there. Do you know what I'm saying? Carla's mm -hmm. plea deal became known as one of the worst in Canadian history. The following year, an investigation was done on the investigation into Damn. Paul and Carla's case as to why they fell through the cracks and how this could be prevented in the future. I guess since then, they have tried to implement a new system for tracking serial predators, improving communication between police departments, and hoping to never have a case like like this go unsolved for as long as it did. So then on July 4th, 2005, 35 year old Carla was released from prison having served just 12 years behind bars. Now Carla couldn't go back to St. Catharines, okay? She was not welcome there. So instead she moved to Montreal and started a new life there. Carla said that she still had nightmares about the girls and felt great remorse this for whatever. what she did. Stop lying. And then she also went to the courts and hoped to get a name change, but she was denied the right to changing her name Damn because right. she is a public figure. So she wasn't allowed to do that. So over the years, she remarried and she went on to have three kids of her own. From what I could find as of 2020, it was said that she no longer lives with her children or her husband. Thank and there God. was a period of time where she was like a volunteer at a, a primary school. And like that caused- Like I would hate to be her child. There's no way in hell. Like you set those child up to fail the moment you gave birth to them. Like, like who? Like, like, like they found that your mother is like. Come on, bro. That's like that's like that's like being a seven Hitler. Be like, hey, hey, what's up, guys? Oh my God, you're Hitler's child. Wait, wait, wait. I, I have, I, I, I didn't do what he did. It doesn't matter. Like, come on, like, like you're setting them up to like just be hurt. Like, and and like who will remarry her? Who is that brave? I don't believe that bullshit. I have nightmares every night. Like, man, maybe you see his nightmares of Paul getting out and choking the hell out of her. That's what he has. That's what he have nightmares of. Because if he gets out, that's, <laughs> she probably be one of the first he's going to go for. I mean, I'm going to be real with you. But, uh, like, it, it's just crazy, man. Like, that deal was complete garbage. It was just, it, it, was, it was ridiculous that that happened obviously a lot of outrage because she was working with kids or young adults and like nobody did a background check i know right thought, that's not a good fit it seems like wherever she goes she's just not welcome anywhere she goes i mean for good reason i know right? i personally believe that carla yeah she should have been locked up for a lot longer okay and she like, should have gotten in life okay so i went to the museum of death in los angeles and they have their personal photos there on display you can there's a museum of death? Good lord, man. There's like something for everything. I had no idea there's a museum of death. Like, what? Like, I'm I'm shocked by that because that's something I never thought of. I've never thought of like a museum of death. Like, museum of science, museum of history, museum of map, even like museum of animals and museums of shapes and puzzles, museum of toys, museum of death. That never crossed my mind, not one time. That never crossed my mind. <laughs> like, so, that's, that's, you, you really do learn something every day, huh? I'm like, oh my God, I'm sorry, guys. That's just, that really, she really said, like, museum of death. I was like, this would be museum of death. Like, what's going on there? Ugh. in the horrible crimes versus a victim. 
The judge allowed the jurors to watch the videotapes and only allowed the public to listen to them but not view it. They didn't want to put the family through more grief by viewing these tapes because of just how awful they were. Paul's yeah. trial lasted I months. Imagine, man. At the end of it, the jury deliberated for five hours. And then on September 1st, 1995, 31-year-old Paul Bernardo was found guilty of all nine charges against him, including the two murders. Paul was sentenced to life in prison. While Paul is sitting in prison, he also confessed to 14 more sexual assaults of women in the Scarborough area, and the judge declared him just a dangerous offender, a which will just, most like, likely him the, keep him in they give prison him death without sentence, the chance Maybe of parole. Not for the rest of his life. Cause he does have a possibility of parole after like 25 years, I believe, but let's hope that he does not get out because it sounds like he's, he would do it again. Like, come on. So the great debate around this case was if Carla got off way too easily. She did to me. Many she believe did. that Carla was just as sick, if not more sick than Paul was. Now, whatever was on these tapes showed a completely To do something like that, man, even, even like, like, uh, like it wasn't like he held a gun to her head. He didn't put a knife to her. He simply told her to do it, and she did it. Like there has to be something, something inside that enjoyed that to just do her. I don't care how much she loved them, how much she wanted to be like something inside of her had to enjoy doing that, had to want to do that. Like to to help him drug and rape your sister and then for you to rape her afterwards? I I'm just sorry, no, there has to be something inside you that's dark and twisted. Different side of Carla, but also just a different story. I didn't see them. I don't want to see them, so I didn't look it up. But just based off of what I was hearing, um, from interviews with the police department and stuff and the jurors. It was really bad. Carla seemed thrilled to be there. Do you know what I'm saying? Carla's plea deal became known as one of the worst in Canadian history. The following year, an investigation was done on the investigation into <laughs> Paul and Carla's case as to why they felt the how they feel about that. and how this could be prevented in the future. I guess since then, they have tried to implement a new system for tracking serial predators, Hopefully. improving communication between police departments, and hoping to never have a case like so this go suck. unsolved for as long as it did. So then, on July 4th, 2005, 30 Five year old I am Carla shocked she made it out of prison, prison having talked. served just and, and, 12 and years like, behind bars. Now, Carla couldn't go back to St. Catharines, okay? She was not welcome there. So instead, she moved to Montreal and started a new life there. Carla said that she still had nightmares about the girls and felt great remorse for what she did. She wanted and to change her name so no I could recognize her. To get a name change, but she was denied the right to changing her name because she is a public figure. So oh she wasn't allowed to do that. So over the years, she remarried and she went on to have three kids of her own. From what I could find as of 2020, it was said that she no longer lives with her children or her husband. And there was a period of time where she was like a volunteer at a, a primary school. And like that caused obviously a lot of outrage because she was working with kids or young adults and like nobody did a background check and maybe thought that's not a good fit. It seems like wherever she goes, she's just not welcome anywhere she goes. As she should be. I mean, for good reason. She should I not personally be believe that Carla, There's yeah, no way she should have been locked in for a lot longer. Okay, and like even because okay, so I went to the Museum of Death in that's Los still Angeles, shocking. and they have their personal photos there on display you can go there and oh it's just be prepared you go there and they have all the photos and this was like before i really even knew much about the case but this image has been burned into my brain because it's carla like smiling all big and she's holding up she's like holding up someone's head she's like oh my she just God. was excited but yeah i think she should have spent a lot more time behind I think bars she, should be dead, but I mean, just she killed her own damn sister thank the you hell? i forgot about that yeah girl no that's what I'm saying. This bullshit. Fuck forgiveness. I'm not about it. All right. My mom told me to forgive. I'm not. No. There's just some things I can't forget. 
as an older brother, as a, as a as an older shepherd, as a human being, like like I I just I can't forgive something like that. Like I said, there's something inside of her that did that to help him saw off those bodies, and the whole bit like no, that's bullshit. And I'm glad she shouldn't be married. She shouldn't have kids. I I, I feel sorry for those children and her husband because this dumbass. No, I don't feel sorry for him because he married the kids. I feel sorry for because they you you get to pick who who's your parents in this world. So unfortunately, you know they they they're gonna have to deal with that for the rest of their lives. That cursed name falling around. They go, hey, is your mother want to do this? Hey, is your mother want to kiss your sister? Hey, is your mother like like for the rest of their life? That's all they're going to hear. The husband, I don't know if he was high. I don't know if he didn't know who she was or something like that. Like, I don't know not how. She's probably, she's probably one of the most famous people on the, on the goddamn earth at that time. So I don't know how, but it's like, I I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how, how, how could she have kids? How could she marry? Let alone, how could she be working with kids? You know, like, come on. I wouldn't, have let her, I wouldn't let her anywhere near a kid. I wouldn't let her near my two breasts. Like, come on. Like, bro, stop. Stop. Like, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. She's still walking the streets at this very moment. Like it, it just shows the the rawness in our justice system. And people ask, you know, I've had people ask, you know, why, why don't you believe in our justice system? Don't you trust our justice system? No, I don't trust our justice system because shit like this happens where she's able to walk free. She should have got just as much time as Paul had. She should be sitting in a cell right next to Paul. Matter of fact, that's where she should be. Since she likes to like, it, it, it's disgusting. You talk about like it, it's just it's it's wrong. It's wrong, like these girls, like they, they, they were taken from, they were killed, like her sister, like her goddamn little sister, man. Come on, and and, and I, if I was her parents, it, it, I'm sorry, like I, I may still love her or something, cause that's my child, but there's no way I'd be able to face her. There's no way I'd be able to talk to her. There's no way I'd be able to be like, hey, I still look like just like like come on. No, no. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Out, out. Be gone. Go. And that might you friends, so not pass story about Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka. Um, thank you for recommending this awful story. Are you happy? I would love to hear your guys' thoughts down below. Do you think that Carla should be in prison for a lot longer? I it's think she'd be dead. That's my opinion. Bait. A big thank you to Hunt a Killer for partnering with me on today's video. But other than that, let me know who you want me to talk about next week down in the comment section because I do read my comments. Love and appreciate you guys. I hope you have a great day. You make good choices and I'll be seeing you guys later. Bye. That was like loud. I'm sorry. But anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. Oh, shit. Damn it. That's the end of the video. Sorry about that. Uh, that's, that's the end of the video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Uh, Personally, I'm going to tell you that I, I think she should be dead. Like, I think they both should be dead, honestly. I'm firm believer. Like, if they, if they don't get, if they don't, if they, don't, if they, don't, if they don't get life in prison, they should, they, they should be dead. Because, like, it's, it's not fair. Like, they took, they took these, these, these precious things from these young girls, and they took them life, and they took their lives from them. Like, it's not right. I believe what they got was equal balance. I believe in, you know, equal, you know, you know, balance, you know, you know, it, it's, it, it, it just wasn't right for me. It wasn't enough. And I'm sorry. I know for some people may say, oh, but you're like this. You know, but no, I'm sorry. That's my opinion. And I'm sticking with it. I just, like, they should both be, they should either be life in prison for the rest of their lives without ever being able to see the sunshine again, locked in the deepest, darkest shell possible by themselves, never talking to another human being except for the person when they come and bring their meal to the door. Or dead. Like, either one of those. Either in jail Isolate or in the ground, like that. That's my honest opinion. But let me know your guys thought that low. I mean, like just uh, like there are some moments, man. Just hearing about her sister and just hearing, like I just like in my head, I have three younger sisters. I'm an older sibling myself, and just even the thought of that, like man, like the, the, I could, I can't even, I can't even like think of comprehend like something like that happening, let alone me doing it. Like I can't I, I, I can't comprehend it. Man. I, I just I just can't. It's too much of my brain to process. I can't that's something that's something I, I just I can't even imagine, man. It hurts to even it hurts to, right now even to think about something like that. I'm a full big believer in, you know, karma and stuff like that. And I, I just feel like they just failed.
I felt they felt. I felt secure. I don't. I don't. And the thing is, I don't feel she felt guilty. I don't feel that you know. Maybe she is guilty, but not the way people think. I just don't. I just don't think. Like I think she enjoyed that. I really do. I really do believe that she enjoyed that. That she enjoyed what she was doing to them girls. Like, and how she was helping them, and how she probably that truth. Like, like, did you hear the way she said, like, how she talked about the wine glasses? The fucking wine glasses? Like, how she was mad, how we're using them to drug girls? I was like, well, how would you not drug girls? And I'm like, you could just see her priorities were not what it need to be. Like, I honestly, I'm, saying, I'm glad. I hope she's in somewhere in some deep, dark-ass forest by herself, away from any human contact whatsoever. But let me hear that sound. Let me know your thoughts down comments section below, guys. Sorry about the rant. If you like me, so give me a thanks, subscribe, and share. The be a lit with Chris and Rizzo. That's what it's channel. Please go support her. I actually really enjoyed it. I never heard her before, but I actually really enjoyed it. I really liked her. She's beautiful. She's funny. And I, I just really enjoyed her. You know, and she was able to really give, she was able to really give a good talk during the story. She really kept me, you know, interested in the way she was talking. Even her makeup, like, it's funny because, you know, I'm not a makeup person. But just even the way she was doing her makeup as she was talking, even that was keeping me interested. So, please go support her. Make sure to follow me on social media down below. And make sure to check out other videos for her joining me react to. And again, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. But I'm out. Peace.